companies now. We have the management of HPCL with us, Mr. Sarana, the CMD of the company is now joining in. Mr. Sarana, thank you very much for taking the time out. Can you just detail to us how business has changed for you post uh, 9th of November and what is the impact of demonetization on HPCL? Post uh, demonetization on 9th of November, two or three things happened. There was a initial surge in the volume mm -hmm. for two to three days because of uh, first thing was there is a normal psychological tendency to uh, to uh, to accumulate the things so that uh, people do not get inconvenience in future. So people thought that whether they will be getting petrol, whether they will be getting diesel because of the currency shortage, etc. And therefore, there was a definite surge in the market. It was also accentuated because petrol pumps were one of the options where the old currencies were being accepted. And therefore, the people thought that they can top up the tanks. So that was the initial reaction. It, after two, three days, then the the pressure on the petrol pumps has subsided because people can only fill up the tanks. They cannot continue to accumulate petrol and diesel. And so we didn't see any long queues at the uh, outlets. And uh, so the, the slowly, gradually, the increase in the volume came to normal. After that, the petrol companies to, uh, took, the, especially the PSU OMCs, took an another initiative to help the common men because there were long queues on the banks. There was a pressure on the banking sector to disburse the money. And ATMs uh, were also going through calibration. Right. At that time, OMCs uh, took that step to provide uh, uh, the uh, POS, uh, yes. the disbursement of some money for PS, POS. And uh, effective 17th or so, we took that decision. And we did uh, substantial work on that. From more than 4,000 uh, outlets, we started disbursing money. Got that, sir. And, Got that. Yeah, uh, so, yeah. so three-stage impact. First, initial surge as people topped up their tanks, then pressure subsided back to normal. And third, you obviously uh, came into the picture helping, right? So, but... Uh, it has de diesel demand over the last 17 days since uh, de the demonetization move was announced has has it taken a hit because we speak with uh, trucker associations across the country and they say well movement is uh, has, you know crawled to almost a standstill uh, so and that would be a, a very large source of diesel demand uh, for uh, omcs like you sir yeah, actually, if you see the November months from 1st to 21st, mm. we still have got a growth of around, as an industry, around 6.2% in diesel retail sales. Mm. Okay, and uh, HPC has got around 7.1% as such. Mm. So, th but definitely there are, uh, now this may be an average impact also because there was sudden surge in between and then it has got normalized. Uh -huh. In between, also there was some uh, some slowness because the toll uh, yes. issues were there. But once it was announced, could you tell us what was the diesel demand growth last uh, the month before? So you're saying that six percent industry diesel demand growth around six percent uh, yeah. from the uh, this month in the month of November. Could you yeah. tell us what was the number in October? In uh, up to uh, I, I don't have the October number immediately, but April to October, on an average, it was. Uh, I think uh, 3.6%. So, no, so diesel demand actually has increased to 6% compared to 3%. Yeah, but no, if, no. Yeah. But, but there is one thing that because three days you had a lot of sales. No? Okay. So, so that must be getting factored into that. But I would agree to you to some extent that in between there will be a, uh, there may be a little bit slowness now after that initial euphoria is over. Because the other industries uh, had to pick up accordingly now. So there may be a short term something, but overall average month number we are still... So, but if you take the, if you take 10th to now, I mean, I think that would be better. It takes out the initial surge, right? Uh -huh. Then you would get a right picture, better picture, right? Yeah, that will get a better picture, but then we need to analyze those numbers more detailed manner. Hmm. So, but definitely that initial surge which was there has got normalized now. Okay. Uh, Mr. Sarana, we've also seen the rupee depreciate around 3 odd percent uh, since the yeah. 10th of November. What's yeah. the impact? Actually, all companies, for example, the oil industries have around uh, 
annual requirement of around 36 billion or so. Our mm -hmm. HP cell will also have around 5 billion a year, the the dollar requirement for buying of crude products, etc. Now, uh, definitely this uh, this increases the cost of procurement for us. Mm. But all companies have got the hedging in the, uh, strategies in place. So to some extent, we already are covered by those hedges. So it is not that immediate surge uh, makes the full impact on us. But the, the rupee depreciation definitely makes the cost of crude higher for us. Mm. Uh, how much inventory uh, are you carrying now, sir? Oil inventory? See, the inventories will be in terms of crude, in terms of finished goods, Crude, crude, crude oil, sir. So normally, we, uh, in terms of tonnage, you are talking about. Uh, no, how many days worth of inventory? We'll have around seven days inventory. <coughs> okay, all right, fair enough. Uh, yeah. uh, just one last point. What percentage of the diesel, diesel demand comes from trucking, sir? Overall? Yes, overall. Uh, yeah, hello. Yeah, go Can on, you repeat sir. the question, please? Uh, what percentage of the diesel demand, uh, I mean, overall as an industry, comes from trucking, uh, fr uh, from trucks, heavy should vehicles, heavy commercial? 50%. 50%. Should be around 50%. 50%. Yeah, okay, yeah diesel that. demand will be at around 50%. Got that. Thank you. Thank you yeah. very much uh, for joining us, Mr. Sarana. Appreciate you uh, coming on and uh, sharing those details with us. So.